This <laughs> meeting is being recorded by continuing yes, I to just, be just press got it. To be recorded. Continue. Okay. Okay. So Lorraine, if you want us to see you, you have to shut the Venetian blind behind you. <laughs> I just have to plug in my phone so it doesn't get uh <laughs> I don't know. That's better. A little better. Anyhow, she was hello, okay everybody. <laughs> I don't know where the other 10 people are, but that's what happens when you run a meeting. Um, so what we're going to do today is uh, just a, a short business meeting. Um, I already welcomed the new people, so I don't have to do that. Um, welcome to the club. And there are a whole bunch of, where it says Virginia, there are four people, for those of you that missed that little bit at the beginning. Um, Jamie, Martinez, Gloria Nelson, Virginia, and Zev are behind that little square. It's like, uh, what was that game show, Hollywood Squares? Yeah. So, <laughs> you just have to use your imagination. Um, everybody got an agenda. So I'm not going to go into this whole thing in a, as some kind of a really formal business meeting. But I do want you to note the um, information about the critique and mentoring session. I sent everybody an email yesterday. Jim, you should have gotten that. Arthur, Art, did you get that yesterday? All right, you'd send me a text, say you're still missing the one about the critique and we'll figure out how to get it to you. Um, anyhow, on January 12th, we're gonna have a session at 3.30 in the afternoon where we'll go over the pictures that you're, if you want to go over the pictures that you're considering submitting to the show. At the same time, you can consider those exact same pictures and see if you want to submit them to the Florida Camera Club Council because it's running the same time. The Florida Camera Club Council, you have until January 31st to submit an image or a few images. So why not submit the same image? I noticed that a lot of the people in our in our club who are submitting to different things sometimes use the same image. I mean, if you have a really good image, you wanna see what different groups think about it. There's nothing wrong with submitting the same image to, a se to several places uh, if it fits the criteria. Anyhow, so if you want feedback on your images, um, you know, crop them a little more, brighten them a little more, or if you have eight that you love and you only want to submit, you can only submit four, then we'll help you hone down to the four that we think might have a, um, a better chance than the others. Uh, and again, it's personal opinion. So like whoever's giving you an opinion, that's their opinion, but at least you can add it into your decision-making. Are you Thanks. offering this as a group thing or is that a one-on-one -on -one like- It's a Zoom. Do? It's a Zoom. The Zoom right. is happening on January 12th so at 3.30. Zoom with everybody? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it worked fine last time we did one. It actually worked great. Um, we did one uh, right before camp. <clears throat> and it was a great conversation about- And you'll tell us how to put our pictures up on there? Yeah. I Well, I, I sent an email yesterday. So check your emails. Okay. And it tells you what we're doing two things. We're going to review the pictures, but we're also asking you to submit them in the right size, just the way you would submit them to the show. That way, if Anne's going to look at them <clears throat> and see if they have any technical issues. Because last year, <clears throat> excuse me, last year she had a lot of problems because she got some images that were way too small or too grainy or not sharp or whatever. And this gives her a chance. So what the process is, you, you'll look at the email, but this is what it says. You're sending the images to me. And I reviewed you know, the size and all that. It's right there on that email. After I get the image, I'm gonna download them to my computer for the session and then forward them to Anne. So that if Anne sees any issues, she'll be able to contact you about that. Or maybe during the session, if it's a minor issue, she'll point it out. Um, but it gives us a little bit more time to to look at them, you know, before they're actually due for the show. So is everybody going to comment or you and Ann are going to comment? No, there's a few people. Um, was David, I asked a few people to make sure they could be there. Um, okay. David, Carl, Anne, uh, me, and there was one other person. Um, and Barbara. we'll do the commenting. Oh, Barbara. Yeah, Barbara. Um, but I'm not sure she can do it. I think she has company. So oh, yeah, I think she, she backed right. out. Um, so anyhow, yeah, just like for those of you that don't remember when we had the live show, 
initially um, Kit and I would sit in the lobby outside the social hall and you could bring your pictures like physically bring them or bring them on a flash drive and we put them in a computer and look at them. So it was a one on one, but we really can't do that. It would just take forever. So this worked OK last time. It's you know, it's not a super in-depth review with lots of discussion. It's a couple of little pointers kind of thing. Um, so that's going to be on January 12th at 3.30. If I get an overwhelming a number of images and then I don't think we can do them all, I'll make a second session. It's not, not a big deal. Um, okay, so the review session for this um, meeting, which is about signs, is going to be on February the 4th. And the, you need to get the pictures to me by January 23rd. So each person can send me two images with signs, whether you're coming on the trip or not. If, if you're not coming on the trip with us, then just go around and shoot them based on the information you're going to get. You're going to practice what you are learning today. So you learn the stuff, go out and shoot and send me two images you have till the end of the month, January 23rd. Um, I would suggest one image with neon and one image regular sign. Oh, good. That's a nice idea. Okay. One neon. I'll write it down so I'll remember. Okay, and then I, I always divide the review into two halves or three thirds um, to group them together and I'll do the same, the same kind of a thing. Um, okay, so the rest of this is just for your information. It gives you all the dates of what we're gonna be doing. There's Barbara Bader. Uh, what we're gonna be doing through April. Um, and down in the bottom, I put um, the dates for the uh, submission period for the show. At the submission periods for the upcoming um, Florida Camera Club Council um, triannuals, and they're there. The submission period for the, sh the cafe. Um, it's all sort of happening at the same time. The cafe pictures are about Valencia Falls, which is perfect because a lot of people don't really want to go anywhere else. So um, moving around Valencia Falls, take some images and submit them for the cafe exhibit. Um, the information about the cafe exhibit and information about the photography, the annual photography show are on the website on our club page. And also I printed out copies and they're in the club alcove right outside the social hall. So you can pick those up and then you have time to um, uh, give me questions if you have any questions. Okay, so that's really all I have for business. The club really doesn't have a lot of business right now. Um, our me. next, go ahead, Wait. go Eileen. The deadline for the cafe contest, the exhibit is February 1st. Right, I, I, in that email, I, in an email that I sent reminding people about today with the Zoom invite, I said that I made a mistake and Barbara Bader pointed that out to me. So. It says February 1st noon is, is the deadline. It says the wrong thing on what you have, right? Um, but I corrected oh, it. I see email. you have February 1 to 30. Right, There's and that's wrong. It should say yeah. just February 1st noon at the, at, uh, is the end of the submission period. So for the cafe pictures, you have the whole month of January to send them in, all right? And, and um, again, just anything around Valencia Falls, no faces. Okay, it's not going to be like a popularity contest about people. It's about the place. Okay. And those who are new, there's a box in the club alcove to put your four by six pictures. Right. You said the way it works, you read the information, but the way it works is you, you email the images in a certain size. The formatting is all described very, very carefully. Um, but then you also have to print up four by sixes so that th that helps them when they're selecting the images and it helps the, the group to lay it out properly. Um, and those four by sixes get left off in the club alcove in a box that's right on, on one of those shelving units that's in the club alcove. Everybody know where the club alcove is? Next to the billiards room. It's where all the flyers normally are for club meetings. Um, and that's where you put them in this box. And that's where you'll find the printed out flyer as well in the box. Adrian, yeah. Adrian, yes, Barbara. it took me a little while to find it. So when you're standing there, it's on the right hand side. It's not in front of you, but on the right hand side towards the middle down. 
It took and me all a while. the flyers and, are on all those shelves. There's only one box. Yeah, but right. okay. Yeah, it's like dark oh, at that level. It's down at waist level. So you have to just sort of look. Once you find it, you go, oh, well, yeah, pretty the obvious. clubs are in alphabetical order. So just look in alphabetical order for photography. Do you have a place that uh, you're printing your images up at now that Costco doesn't do it anymore? No, Costco does. You just can't pick it up at their place. You have to have it mailed to you. Costco oh, is excellent. Still it, it turns out fine. You just yeah. need to allow a little extra time for the mail. Yeah, and they still, if it's not good, they still take it back. It's not a problem because I've been doing pictures like that from camp for years and they send it to you. If it's a big one, they send it to you all rolled up in a tube, just in a mailing tube, just the way that you used to pick it up in the store. And prices are pretty much the same, you know, maybe a few cents more, but not a lot. Okay, any other questions? These are good questions. Okay. All right, today's um, presenters are um, Susan Van Ness and Barbara Schwartz, but Barbara Schwartz um, had to excuse herself for today. So Susan Van Ness is going to be doing this by herself, but the preparation was all for the, from the both of them. Um, Susan, do you want me to go to the screen share right away or you wanna talk first? You can go to the screen share because we have an introductory slide. Okay, great. Okay, does everybody see that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, thanks everybody for joining this afternoon for our presentation on signs. This PowerPoint presentation has three sections centered around outcomes. The first is what do you want to capture in your photograph? Um, two, we'll be talking about how to effectively achieve this goal through techniques in your camera. And three, we'll be talking about how to ach effectively achieve this goal through techniques using your iPhone or Android. Something for everyone. Just be patient if uh, something that we're saying does not apply to you. Next. There are many reasons why you might wish to take photographs of signs. Signs have a lot of um, photographic potential. Next. Um, think about what you'd like to try to convey through your photograph. What was it about the sign that intrigued you, that caught your eye, uh, that attracted you? What are you trying to capture and share? Next. Um, the outcome, possible outcomes that you might want are to evoke memories or feelings. Um, there are signs that illustrate humor. Um, you could try with your sign to embrace creativity or capture local culture. Um, there are lot, loads and loads of script st styles and each one of those um, gives a unique look to the photograph. Um, the sign could provide information or it could share inspirational qu quotes or messages. Um, what if you look at this photograph, um, this is some one of Barb's photographs. And um, what caught Barb's eye was, was the cat in the window of this art shop sitting so regally in the window, inviting passerby mm -hmm. into the shop. Capture a snapshot. You can see Barb's mm -hmm. reflection in the window capturing a sn snapshot. So there she is. Do you see her? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. <coughs> Next. 
Um, signs can evoke memories. A few years ago, Barb made a pilgrimage to Santa Fe, uh, retracing her grandmother's footsteps. Her grandmother spent summers on this Pueblo in the 1930s, studying under the legendary Maria Martinez, uh, Ma Maria of San um, Ildefonso, one of the 20th century's best known native uh, ceramists. Next. Sometimes signs can be part of a poignant portrait. And this sign is supposed to evoke feelings. Next. Signs can be situationally humorous. This advertisement on a bus stop in Chicago caught Barb's eye as the man seemed to be glancing upward towards the walking sign. Next. This hand-painted sign was directing drivers at a dance hall in Lubbock, Texas. Park yonder, please. Next. Um, Bostonians got creative for this eye-catching directional sign. Yep. Next. And this is an icon in downtown Chicago, the Redhead Piano Bar, also embracing creativity. Next. Um, now we're into some shots which capture local culture. And this was taken in Quebec. Um, so you can see this uh, boulangerie uh, captures the local culture of Quebec. Next. And this captures the local culture of the, the rail yard in Santa Fe. Next. Those who design signs use typeface or script styles to promote their product or image. Script styles can attract us to the sign and be a focus of our photographs. This photograph was taken on the south side of Chicago from the car, the light was red and shows informational signs on a neon sign with combination scripts, plus a bit of irony humor as the Salem church sign seems to be pointing in the direction of Petey's bungalow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> next. Okay, so one of the most popular types of signage is script. You can see how um, this is really stands out at you, the red on black, sincerely. Next. Uh, this is called elegant serif signage. It's New Times Roman. Um, next. This is vintage and vintage conveys nostalgia. It's period specific. Um, and the typeface is vintage. Next. This is Ariel, big and bold. Looks neon to me too, big and bold. Next. Helvetica is the most top, popular typeface. Uh, definitely want to listen to this wall. It's loud, it's big. Okay. Next. 
Uh, combinations of different typeface can be very effective. So here we're combining script and sans serif, and we have a uh, welcome to fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. Next. Um, decorative uh, typeface can be playful and fun. Circus, circus. Next. Vertical signs are eye-catching. Next. Vertical sign in a modern script. Uh, you can notice the dark colors. It makes it modern. Minimum color palette, yeah. Next. Uh, marquee or theater signs. Uh, there we are. Uh, all, everybody looking on the theater itself and the marquee. Next. Hand painted signs. They're complete auto repair is very unique. It's hand painted. Next. And now we got out of the kinds of typefaces and we're going to signs that provide direction. Uh, an example of the dramatic effect of using angles and telephoto here. Next. Signs for providing information. Um, use big and bold typeface for Mexico. Next. And signs can also be inspirational in their images. And that is certainly inspirational. Do what you love. Um, so this was Barb's part of the presentation, and I will now go on to my part of the presentation. Next. Um, so I'm going to be talking about uh, techniques for taking stunning photographs of signs. This photo was taken as, in Las Vegas, and it incorporates many styles of fonts in the sign, so all kinds of signage in it. Next. Um, one thing that is easy to do, um, and we do often in our photography, is mixing up the framing of the shots. So one thing is to zoom in on the sign. Uh, in the, on the last shoot that we went to at the Fort Worth Pier, um, this uh, Coca-Cola sign was taken. And I, zoom, I zoomed in on it. Next. Whoa. Next. Got it, sorry. Okay. Um, so also what you can do is shoot the sign with its surroundings. If, if the surroundings strengthen the shot. So if you look at this photograph, um, you see Benny's on, and you just barely see on the beach. So underneath we have the beach. And the beach is very in focus. Um, it's not blurred out. And that's because we're using a smaller aperture to increase the depth of field. Smaller aperture or higher F number to increase the depth of field. That's why that background, which supports Benny's on the beach, is in focus. 
Next. Okay, we're, we're gonna have an opportunity um, when we go downtown. We're gonna go in daylight. We're gonna have the, um, the hour just as, as the sun sets. And we're also gonna have night. So we're gonna be able to take a lot of different photos of both uh, regular signs and neon signs. So the first thing is, um, if, if you wanna uh, confine your focus only on the sign, the best, the neon sign that is, the best time to take it is at night. However, if you plan to take the photo that includes its surroundings, so we just talked about zooming in versus including the surroundings. So I'm talking about if you wanna take the photo which includes your surroundings, the ideal time to take the photo is 15 minutes before dawn, but we're not gonna have that opportunity or 10 minutes after sunset. We will have that opportunity tonight. Um, it's dark enough to allow the neon tubes to show up well, and there is also adequate light to see the surroundings at that time. Okay. So if you're gonna take a picture with the surroundings um, of a neon light, do it uh, about 10 minutes after sunset. Got it? Um, it it's helpful to use a tripod and maybe even a remote shutter release because um, you know, we all have some hand motion. Um, I don't really use the tripod as much as I should, but if you have one, it's, it's, it's a good thing to use uh, with or without the remote shutter release. Um, get as close as you can to the sign. So you can see this sign, we got pretty close and we're actually shooting part of the sign. The sign wraps around both sides of the building. Um, so you can shoot part of the sign and make it look good. Um, also, you see here, avoiding busy spaces. If you, if you take um, a photographs in cities, uh, a lot of times there's a lot of background light, uh, light in the foreground, light in the background. It's distracting. But you can see here, um, the back is light and then inside the building, you know, just a little bit going on. That's fine. So avoid those busy spaces. Um, you can also, incorporate human subjects in a neon shoot. It might, might not seem practical, but it will get you thinking outside the box to get some unique results. Um, there is a photographer, Brandon Wolfell, and he's introduced a new tr trend of photographing neon signs reflected in people's glasses. So if you want to try that one, have at it. Next. Okay, so these are the things that you can do with your camera. Open the aperture to its fullest extent. Uh, to get a large aperture, your F number will be low, small. This is ideal for taking photographs in low light. Um, it's suggested that you not go below one 100th shutter speed. And I know a lot of us uh, 
shoot one over 200 or one over 250. Um, your ISO can be kind of mid-range, 400 to 800 or even higher. And you can adjust your white balance um, to get a certain look. If you balance your camera for daylight, the image will have a warm glow. Um, a tungsten balance will make the Im image bluish. So you can experiment with that. Um, never use a flash when you're uh, photographing neon light. The light from the neon itself will be good. Uh, you can see the, the photograph on the right. Um, the, the light is excellent. And the black back is completely black. Uh, for those of you who shoot, shoot in RAW, that, that RAW produces the high, high quality images, but it takes up a lot of space in the camera. So it's optional. Next. Another thing that you can do downtown is intentional camera movement. Um, so we're gonna suggest a long shutter speed, longer than you're used to, so that um, the shutter can be open for the time that you're doing the movement. So I would start out at 0.3 seconds and not go faster than 1 20th of a second. Um, keep your ISO low, about 100, and set the narrowest aperture, maybe F22. So F22 lets in less light, so it compensates for the length of time that the shutter is open. Uh, that's the reason for that. Next. Okay, and this is what you're going to do. Uh, you can pan, which is a single smooth horizontal or vertical motion with your camera. So remember, you're going to have the uh, exposure long. And so you can pan without that long exposure, either horizontally or vertically. You can try ro rotating your camera, so moving it in a circle. Uh, you can also try uh, taking your lens and zooming it in and out, or even shaking, vibrating the camera, shaking it. Freestyle movements can uh, involve following a curve of something uh, or a bend or a flow of something. You can try that. And creative timing, you can start your movement uh, before you open the shutter or partway through the exposure. So you can keep it still you could press down and then partway through, start moving. Um, creative speed would be if you move faster and larger movements, your photograph is going to be more ab abstract and maybe more minimalist. Next. Um, this is a technique called dual spot, and it's using people to create a connection with the sign. So it's more dramatic. Um, you have a better photograph. You'll see uh, several examples of this. Uh, having a person with the sign. Next. Oh, here's a person with the sign. Mm -hmm. And next. 
and another person with the sign. I want to go back to that person. Oh, she looks good with that sign. Okay, next. The next topic that we're going to talk about is, let's see. is night photography for the iPhone and the Android. Now, there are probably a wide range of different iPhones. So we're going to talk about um, iPhones prior to 11 and iPhones from 11 to 13. Um, we, we can talk about that. All right, so on, on the iPhone, um, there's not really a way to increase the ISO, but you can get an app for that, either Lightroom or Camera Plus 6 for iOS, um, which will allow you to um, increase your ISO. But for today, um, you're going to be able to shoot, don't worry, uh, without this. For the Android, um, manual mode is part of the camera. So good, good. You can, you can make some changes uh, in ISO. Neon light. So uh, what I'm showing you here is uh, I took pictures at Mount's Botanical Gardens light show. And all of these pictures that I'm, photos that I'm gonna show you were taken with my iPhone 12 Pro. I mean, isn't this amazing from an iPhone? Everything is so clear and the way it was. Um, and we'll talk about how to get uh, night shots. Uh, we have a video at the end that talks about how to get night shots that are so beautiful that, like this. Another thing that you can do is uh, backlighting. Uh, so you can shoot into the light to add creativity. And what's really important is to have that long exposure. So the newer iPhones do that automatically in something called night mode. Um, and the older models, you could get ProCam 6. Uh, and for the a uh, Android camera, VF5 to do this for you. Next. Uh, as with your regular camera, uh, it would be a good idea to get a tripod. Uh, the author of the article that I read uh, is suggesting the uh, Joby Grip Tight Gorilla Pod or, or the Mini or the Manfrotto Pixie Mini for a tripod. And you, you all might have some suggestions as well. And the, for the timer, timer or portable shutter release, uh, you can use the camera timer because um, the iPhones do have a camera timer. I think you can go from 10 seconds on down, maybe 10, five and two, something like that. or you could get a Joby impulse shutter release. Uh, this, this photo was also taken at mounts. Uh, you just see the lights, none, none of the background, none of the, none of the tree trunk, 
just the lights. Next. Um, with night photography, you can also convert uh, your photo to the black and white if you try. So I, I showed the photo the way I took it with the blue uh, background and I converted it to black and white. And I believe that the newer iPhones have very good photo editing capability, but if you have an older one, you might need an app like Snapseed. Next. That's all I have for this, but we would like to show you a video now, uh, which shows how to use your iPhone 11, 12, or 13 in night mode. Can't hear. On the iPhone 12. Now, this is a new feature that is for the 12, the 12 Pro, or if you're waiting for the Pro Max or 12 Mini, you're going to be able to use it on those two that are coming in November. So, this is going to be useful because I've been playing around with it and it's a really great feature. All right, guys. So, when you go to capture a shot, you're going to notice in that bottom left, notice that yellow circle icon with the 3S next to it. So, if you tap on this, this is basically how long the phone is going to take to capture your nighttime shot. Now, when you tap on this, this little slider comes up and you can manually adjust how long you want the iPhone to take to capture a good shot. So you can adjust this all the way up to 10S, which is 10 seconds. So do keep in mind that when you do capture the shot, you're gonna have to keep the phone steady and hold it in place until the phone captures the shot. And after you go ahead and snap a picture, this little dial over here is going to turn into a timer for us. So I'm going to show you guys that now. So let's go ahead and capture this shot. And see, now that dial has turned into a little timer. So you just want to hold the phone steady. And there we go. This is the shot that it came out with. So this is how you do nighttime shots on the iPhone 12. And sorry if I'm uh, stuttering a little bit, but it is freaking cold outside. So I had to wait till nighttime and it is starting to get cold here. All right, so that's gonna do it for this episode of Tip Tuesday, guys. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, comment down below with any questions or anything that you'd like to say, and make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you all in the next video. When we were... Okay, so um, from here, I'll take any questions. Um, and then uh, what we'll do is go downtown, um, park. You can take your photos of signs in the daylight. Uh, you can wait until the sun sets, which is pretty early, uh, between five and six, uh, maybe closer to six, and take some photos there then. And then we can meet at 6.30. I never did hear anything from Johnny Brown's, but we can meet out in front of Johnny Brown's since there's only going to be eight of us um, and uh, just try to get in at 630. Does that work for those of you that are going? Yes, uh, let me tell you the list of who I have that's going is myself, Virginia and Zev, um, uh, Gloria, Lorraine Green, Lorraine Suslack, and Susan. Um, and Jamie is coming, but she's not going to dinner. And Marty said he was going to go and not go to dinner. And Jim said that they were going to go down and not go to dinner. 
Still true. Do you have the address of Johnny Brown's or? It's right on the railroad tracks. Add Jamie to the dinner. Add Jamie to the dinner. Okay. So that's eight. Um, Lorraine is asking, where is Johnny Brown's? It's at the railroad tracks right on the corner. Okay. You can't, you cannot miss it. It's got that huge wraparound sign. Diag diagonally across from the Italian restaurant that's also on the railroad tracks, whose name I am totally drawing a blank on right now. <laughs> Angelo's. Angelo's. We'll meet at 6.30 at the restaurant because that will give you time to photograph uh, as the sun is setting. The Italian restaurant is Vic and Anthony. Vic and Angelo's, yeah. It's a diagonally across <laughs> from Vic and Angelo's. And the whole restaurant is outside. It's, uh, it's, there's no inside. Yeah, there um, is inside. Well, there's but it's inside. not, it's, but it's not walls and doors and things. Can I just make a suggestion? There's, yeah. um, if you go into the new food hall in Delray, which is across the street and down the block on the along the railroad tracks, they have some great signs in there, including neon signs, and some really funny signs in there too. Oh, great! Thank you. Where's that? It's in the new food hall. It's across from um, Johnny's. If you cross the cross Atlantic Avenue and just go down that street one more block um there's the new food hall there and they have tons of really funny signage uh neon signs regular signs some really great stuff in there okay okay do people want to meet when we get there like if we park in the garage and just walk downstairs we could meet in front of the arts garage at 4 30 and at least we'd be a group Yes. Oh, I don't okay. know that I want to meet. Uh, okay. I may no. come two minutes later. Okay. Yeah. All right. So then let's just say that it, I'll be at, at the front of the arts garage at 430. I'll stay there for like 10 minutes if anybody wants to join. Uh, and then I'll start walking. Okay. So if there's, because there might be some people who are alone that would rather have a partner. No, we're not. No. no. Oh. No, the other place. So at 6.30, we're meeting at Johnny Brown's to eat. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we're going to try that. Yeah. We have a reservation there? Um, actually, they never got back to me, but it wouldn't work anyway because we're now eight people and their minimum for a big group is 10. Okay, so we'll think, pick up a couple of people on the street. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I think we'll be okay. Yeah. There's lots of places along there to eat outside if we can't eat there. Worst case scenario, we'll split up. Yeah. But we'll try it. Okay. Yeah. All right. See you guys down there. Um, the other thing I would point out is that thing that you saw in the video of how to set the timer and how to set the long exposure. That's something you can play around with for... Um, for, for trying uh, in, intentional camera movement because the shutter would be open that whole time that the thing is clicking down. So instead of trying really, really hard to hold it steady, try doing a little bit of movement and see what you get. It's all a big experiment. And that's something we're going to be doing in April as well. So this would be a good time to try, see what you get, and then we'll have more of that in April. Okay. Goodbye, any, everybody. Any questions? Bye. Anybody have any questions for Susan? No, thank you, though. Stay on the phone, Lorraine, and I'll talk okay. to you. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.